Craig. Hello, Craig and friends. Uh, Craig and friends. Uh, welcome back to uh, Rules, Jewels, and D&D Schools. This week we're talking about the new, all new, shiny, brand new, but not new, player's handbook that is totally just <laughs> regular 5e and not anything else. It's just an extension of 5e, I promise. <laughs> it's backwards compatible. Backwards compatible. 3.5 is backwards compatible. One D&D to rule them all. Yeah. Backwards compatible, but you're never going to use the old barbarian. You're never going to use the old stuff. (laughs) All right, all right. Let's get right into this. Um, 5.5 or 6E aside. Or they're getting rid of the one D&D thing, right? They said they were. Uh, I heard that, but that was like... Uh, non-reliable source. It was some some people were talking about that that went to the private. Uh, <coughs> well, they have a little private D and D get together where they were like, "Ooh, let me tell you all the insider secrets." Yeah, yeah, yeah. The a bunch of like YouTubers and stuff got invited, and they were, you know, what I'm talking about. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I do. Summit. Creator thing. summit. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. There anyways, were a few leaks out of that, but who knows? Anyways. Anyways. New player's handbook. Did you find you read it? What do you think? Anything? What's the first interesting thing that you would like to talk about in all these new changes? Let me let me check my notes. Oh, oh, I have no weapon notes. mastery. <laughs> oh, you want to start with that? I mean, I just went down the thing, and then when I saw something weapon I liked, I made a note of it. So, all right, sure. Weapon Let's talk about weapon mastery. The, is a big deal that came with this. It is. So, it is a big deal. They're they're cribbing off a little bit of Pathfinder here, two E, but that's all right. That's awesome. Pathfinder had a lot of stuff like this. So I yeah, love it. They added a thing to where like martial classes get a little extra thing whenever they use certain types of weapons. And some I of think, those extra things are great. And yes, and some of them are. That sounds I can cool. Push you ten <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think I think fighters get up to two or something i don't remember how, how exactly how it works like for things but like every martial class Fighters has a chance turned. to get a weapon mastery when you get a weapon mastery depending on the weapon it is it has a, a thing called a mastery property and then you can use that property so let's go through them first off wait wait wait, wait. Yes, before I'm we waiting. go through all through which one do you think is the most powerful out of all these um i think which... either cleave or graze Cleave is what really you, good. I think Nick is really good. I, mean, I think Nick's pretty good too. I think, unless they change the wording, it is oh, push. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. You said <laughs> Get him next to a cliff. <laughs> no, no, no. Not even about a yeah. cliff, Joe. Yeah, it's not let, even about let, a cliff. Listen to this. Listen to this nonsense that he's got going on. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> Ten feet away from you is what happens when you push. What direction is away? Away, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's away. It's it's away from you, right? That means you could hit them ten feet in the air, have them fall prone, and take an extra d six every single time you swing your weapon. Okay, I love it. Specify some. <laughs> they should <laughs> specify like directly away or straight you away. Uppercut. With your yeah. <laughs> everyone's gonna be like getting the home run bat from uh freaking Smash Brothers, <laughs> Super Smash Brothers, <laughs> and they can be one size larger than you. <laughs> That's even so better. You could, you could be like a gnome and go out to like a Goliath because <laughs> you know that's how it works. Because you rules. Go, well, bam! If I jump up there and hit them with a little hammer, and then they fly up ten, ten feet. feet in the air, and crash back down, uh, just crushing people. With this little gnome, you're, you're hitting ankles, and they're just like flipping upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's what he's doing. He's sweeping the legs. Just just so hard that you're going ten feet up. Yeah, oh my God, it this, that's incredible. the thing that I love about this. They're adding stuff like this that makes it more I think role play it adds to the cool factor of like I'm doing this so I can push him this far or I can do I'm going to run up and I'm going like to kick that. him in the shin and after that happens he's going to go 10 feet in the air 
He's going That's to go take yeah, away that from gnome me. That gnome takes slow and be like, I stab everybody in the heel. They go blast him ten work. feet away with your stab to the heel and then slow him down. <laughs> all right, so I feel like we should talk about these because we keep all right, all mentioning right. them, and some people might not know what they what they are. So uh, the weapon masteries. Uh, first one up, cleave. <clears throat> Uh, prerequisites are it's a melee weapon and has the heavy property and if you hit a creature with a melee attack using this weapon you can make an attack roll with the weapon against a second creature within five feet of the first that is also within your reach on the hit on a hit the second creature takes the weapons damage but uh, don't add your ability modifier to that damage unless the modifier is negative you can make this extra attack only once per turn so it's pretty cool like you can, if cool. you're standing next to someone and they're two people next to each other and you can you can cleave through them and hit two of them you won't do as much damage to the second one but it's cool i like it it's cool two thumbs up two thumbs up i think this thumbs up honestly this part of it weapon mastery is probably one of the best changes in the whole thing you like it yeah this is is. pretty pretty (laughs) awesome yeah this is what i wanted this is one of the things i wanted from pathfinder uh the second one flex uh this prerequisite has to be a versatile uh, weapon. So when you hit with a melee attack using this weapon, you deal its versatile damage, even if you're wielding it with one hand. So it's like Titan's Grip, kind of. <laughs> get that D10 yeah. and with the long sword, you still get to have a shield. Yeah, you could, or you could dual wield long swords. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> Are there, I've got to make up make up a weapon that is both versatile and light <laughs> somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the next one is Graze. Uh, prerequisite is that it has is a melee weapon and has the heavy property. Wait a oh, minute. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. I got to go back to Flex. Okay. Are there any ranged weapons that are versatile? Yes. Uh, wait. I don't think there are. They're either one hand no, or no, two. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was like, could you like get a heavy crossbow with one hand? <laughs> no, you can't do that. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. You know what you can do, though? Oh, well, I'll get to it when we get there. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Graze is a melee weapon with a heavy property. If your attack roll with this weapon misses a creature, you can deal damage to that creature equal to the ability modifier you use to make the attack roll. Uh, this damage is the same type dealt by the weapon, and the damage can't be increased in any way other than increasing the ability modifier. So that's kind of cool. It's like... Um, like a, a like a save spell, basically. Yeah. Like even if you miss, you can do some damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's so, like the it's like cool. the like it's it. the perfect it's the perfect weapon mastery for you, Isaac. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, next All right. What's next? Nick. Uh, this is for light weapons. When you make the extra attack of the light property, you can make it as part of the attack action instead of as a bonus action. You can still use this extra attack only once per turn. So that's pretty cool. You, it frees up a bonus action if you're using light weapons. I like it. Yep. And now we're two. Push. Push. Heavy, two-handed, or versatile property. You, which means, which means, you can push someone ten feet away with a heavy crossbow, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that means you can sit. Cuss that shot. <laughs> shouldn't they get hit with it and go bow and just get blasted 10 feet back instantly yep. You're just like sniper <laughs> dude incredible that's yeah, amazing a creature with this weapon you can push the creature up to 10 feet away from okay you dude it is uh if it is no more than one size larger than you. here's the character here's the character you're like a guy with a you're like a little gnome with a cartoonishly big heavy crossbow and all your arrows have like a <laughs> boxing glove on the end of them <laughs> You're like a little clown man, and you're, you're just like, bunk, and then the little you like, fist It's so over. big, you like hold it like a bazooka. Yeah, and you yeah like, like hold it over your shoulder. <laughs> Every time you shoot it, it blasts you back, too. You push it, no, you push it in like a cart in front of you, and it has like triggers on it, so you can release it. The whole thing is you think that it's pushing the enemy 10 feet away, but really you're getting knocked 10 feet yeah, back. Yeah, you're, you're, you're going 10 feet back <laughs> instead of it going 10 feet away. It's like the gnomish world and larger. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm done. I'm done uh, talking about push. Uh, next one is sap. No other. It doesn't prerequisite. No other properties. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I guess it means you can be any weapon. If you hit yeah. a creature with this weapon, that creature has disadvantage on its next attack roll before the start of your next turn. The flail. Okay. It doesn't have any properties. 
the morning star oh meaning meaning it can't be heavy or two-handed or versatile yeah is that what it means yep i guess okay no other properties this could be really good like in the early game sure and you can swap these out later can't you the weapon masteries uh you can as a fighter I don't as a fighter you yeah get, you get three weapons that you're mastered with and you I can think. switch them you during your downtime you can train with another weapon and yeah. replace nice okay the what's next, next? One is slow no prerequisites if you hit a creature with his weapon and deal damage to the creature you can reduce its speed by 10 feet until the start of your next turn if you hit the creature more than once with this property the speed reduction does not exceed 10 feet solid okay. pretty solid Sounds choice good. yep yep uh next one is topple if you hit a creature with his weapon uh prerex is heavy reach or versatile uh, if you hit a creature with this weapon, you can force the creature to make a con save. Uh, it's eight plus your proficiency bonus plus the ability modifier you use to make the attack roll. And on a failed save, the creature has its own condition. So you can knock them down, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you could push grapple. is not yeah. designed to be <laughs> knocked up into the air and fall prone. Yeah. Are you just now thinking about that? <laughs> well, because they have a, 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 a save for knocking hey, someone prone hey. on another one. Isaac, sometimes fun crap like that is just about people making grammatical mistakes. And then you're like, well, actually. <laughs> well, and then, see, and then, the way you put this, I can do it like this. Exactly. Oh. That's sometimes, oh. that's, sometimes that's what it's about. <laughs> but, every, you know, it's not like the olden days where you read something like that and you just have to deal with it. Or maybe you're like, some guy on the forum said this. <laughs> now everyone goes straight to Twitter and goes to J-Craw. It's like, how is this supposed to work? And J-Craw's like, of course it doesn't work like that, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one is Vex. Prerequisite ammunition finesse or light property if you hit a creature yes. with this weapon and deal damage to the creature you have advantage on your next attack roll against that creature before the end of your next turn sounds real good for rogues yes if they i don't know if they can get that property get weapon mastery but if they can that's the one i think they'd want it'd be good for fighters too right because you have multiple attacks yeah you can only do it once I feel like it's better for rogues because they need that one hit to actually land. Vex, let me read read that again. Let me read that again. If you hit a creature with this weapon and deal damage to the creature, you have advantage yeah. on your next attack roll against that creature before the end of your next turn. So why wouldn't this be? This would be incredible on fighters because you'd hit them once, you'd get advantage on your next attack. Second attack, you have advantage. Boom, next attack. That's three. That's two advantage attacks per round once you have three attacks. I don't think you. Well, I guess it doesn't specify, and every other one has said it that does you get not. It once per turn. Yes. Well, then, yeah, it is really good for fighters. It is really it's super incredible. good. It's incredible for fighters. It's dumb, in fact. <laughs> They'll change that. <laughs> I just I always the... have advantage on my eight attacks per turn. <laughs> exactly. It. Only the first one doesn't have advantage, and then after that, I'll just flank for one, and then I'll be good to go. <laughs> Uh, uh, so that's all the weapon properties. You see, Nets weapon no longer masters. a weapon. I did see that. So what you got to do is you got to get everybody in your party has a net, and you all throw it at the same time, and they have to make like with our party five DC fifteen strength saves, <laughs> or be trapped under a net. <laughs> picturing some monster be like, it's <laughs> <laughs> like nets everywhere. I feel like th this is gonna be a thing where all DMs go. All right, nobody can have a net. <laughs> Nobody can have a net. One roll. One roll. No nets. Can you imagine? every At the start of every fight, every monster in the whole game has to roll five DC 15 strength saves. And if he happens to roll one one and doesn't have a plus 14 strength, <laughs> he's trapped under a dumb net and everyone can run up and kick him. I love it. What is it, What condition does it actually put on the restraint? So all monsters yeah. are immune to restraint? No, all monsters are immune to restrain. <laughs> yes, that's the, you're only that's fighting problem. oozes for the rest of your yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, guns are now in here. Yeah, they, they got yeah. pistols and muskets. America, and they do a ton of damage. I, I I don't see why you would take the musket. You just lose the extra two. <laughs> uh, it's because it's depending on your campaign setting, right? 
Yeah. It's, it's always said your DM will tell you if these are available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with weapons. Dude, it's that, just that now. Expensive. Well, <laughs> thing is, okay, that's another thing. Apparently, they're coming out with another one that has list prices for all the magic items in the game. But hmm. the DM at the end of the day could determine how much everything costs. And if you're in yeah. a world where guns are common, it could very easily make it to where like a pistol costs as much as a short sword because no one buys short swords anymore, right? Well, they're martial again, so. Well, I'm I saying that, that like. That's the expensive part. <laughs> yeah, buying all the ammo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. I was an adventurer, but then I ran out of ammo. <laughs> I ran out of ammo. They got rid of the new. More. They got rid of the new dying condition. Yeah, they're back to the death saves or whatever. Yep. Uh huh. We'll get there. Uh, next on my notes is that they've moved some spells to class specific, which was a thing that I thought they were not going to do because they came out with these uh, spell lists, arcane nature, natural or whatever. And yeah. And the, the divine. So they're they doing this. Keep those three separate things, but no, they're also going to have class specific spells. Uh, the, the spell list thing. That's another thing that's in Pathfinder 2E. They have four sets instead of three. Yeah, I, you know, I, I like it. I, I think it's a good idea. I didn't think they were going to do it that way, but I I did want them to do it that way. So, so the spell, they're, they're adding some spells. Uh, 11 new spells appear, um, each one connected to a Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard feature. Yeah. So Arcane Eruption is a new Sorcerer spell. Yep. Uh, it is a fourth level evocation spell, churning magical blah, 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 blah. Choose, so you, what is it? When you 15. cast a spell, select the damage type dealt by the explosion. So it's a 20, 20 radius, 20 foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range. You choose the damage type, and yeah. each creature must make a con save. On a failed save, it takes 66 of the chosen damage type. On a successful save, uh, half as much. Choose one of the d6s you roll, the number rolled on that die determines a condition that's applied to each creature that failed to save. So one through six is incapacitated, blinded, frightened, poisoned, charmed, or deafened. So you roll your cool. 66 and then you're like, I rolled one of every number. I can pick whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you roll cool. a one, like you want to roll a one. Incapacitated, <laughs> like, What's the save? Con, it right? is con save. Yeah. Oof. That's that's good. I mean, it's a cool feature. It's a cool feature. Cons a, a lot really of creatures have a high con. Yeah. It's just something to cast besides fireball. Well, if you're a sorcerer, wizards can't cast this. Nope. What's next? Sorcerer's yeah. burst. Sorcerer burst. Um. Next up is at least on the list here is book, book of, of shadows. So the book of shadows. Oh, book of shadows. And oh, the, we're gonna go like that. We're gonna go. Well, I'll go through these three. Book of shadows. Okay. Uh. What is it? Packed familiar. Yes, packed familiar and packed weapon are the basically the three packs you can get are now spells instead of features that you get when you take that pact. When we need to talk about, I think we need to talk about the classes separate from the spells because, like, microphone, dang it! <laughs> yeah, the uh, <laughs> switch it to the other microphone. I don't have another microphone. Your mic on your headset doesn't work? I, just, I don't have it. I don't know where it is. See if that XLR cable is plugged in good. Yeah, it's in there. Interesting. Anyways, um, I think Warlocks got done dirty. You think? I do not think Warlocks are very good. Oh, they did get a the the most sizable nerf to the spell hex. Oh, dude, hex sucks now. <laughs> hex That's is like worthless. worthless now. Yeah. So before hex, every time you dealt damage to someone, you'd get it to add an extra d6 of necrotic. Now you get to add an extra d6 once per turn. So your three beams of 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 your eldritch blast that seem to go perfectly with it, like nice and synergistic doesn't matter anymore now you just make an extra attack that you might miss it's it's pretty worthless (laughs) (laughs) 
Before it was, over, it was like, I might miss these, but I'll get to do an extra D6 if I do hit. And now it's like, I might miss these. The end. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's what I'm saying. Challenge. This is a massive change that screws them over. They're yeah. they're like, I guess we're just going to talk about it right now. Warlocks. Is that what it is? We're, are we jumping straight sure. to that? We'll just jump. We'll jump all around. We're jumping all, all around. around. We're jumping all around. We're not going in order. Warlocks like. I don't think I don't think that they know what they want to do with warlocks. Do you agree? I mean, I think they know what they want to do thematically, but not mechanically. So, so like, now they, now they're not a full caster anymore. Well, they were they weren't a full caster anyway. They were kind of a caster. They were mostly a caster in They, they only well, cast Elders Blast. Yeah, they I know, had, but they before they had kit like that. two or three spells. Yeah. Now they get a ton of spells, like ton, well, not as much as a wizard or something, but they that's get the a thing. Lot more spells. Okay, slots. so so so, let's take this into account. Okay. Let's say you go warlock and you take all your invocations to get the arcane uh, thing. I can't remember the name of it, which allows you to take another spell and do all mm -hmm. that. Even if you did mystic that, Arcanum. yeah, in Mystic Arcanum. Even if you did that all the way, you wouldn't have as many spells as a wizard. So why not just play a wizard? It's better in every single way. It's got better. It's got better class features. It's got better unique spells. Like nothing about it got nerfed. Like the nerf to hex is enough to make this class. It was already not the best class in the game. So these changes didn't benefit it in any way. Uh, let me check one thing because I don't know. There it is. I need to scroll down to it in my document so, as well. Yeah, before you had two spells, basically that you for the most of the most of the game, you had two spells you could cast, but you got those spell slots back on a short rest. Now they give you a bunch more. Like now you're like a half now, spell slots, but you need a long rest to get them back because there's no short rest stuff anymore. There's they're still keeping some short rest stuff like um, but most of the surge and fighter stuff, some fighter stuff, but they seem to be moving away from it. None of the new stuff is on short rest. I guess, but it just doesn't make any sense why you would. Yeah, they're they're. It just feels like they're doing the same thing that they did with the other classes, which is just making them more homogenous. <laughs> Some of these now see the other classes, sorcerer, wizard. I think they came out pretty dang good, dude. Sorcerer was already good. Its base kit was good in five e. And it continues to be good. And they changed a couple of the meta magic thing, but you get more meta magic options. You get them earlier. You get them at level two. Like sorcerer is doing pretty dang good, dude. And wizards, they're doing incredible. Now that those spells like hunger of hunger, hunger of Hadar and a, and a few other ones are now part of the wizard spell list too. Now that you can modify spells with the new wizard, uh, you can create spells. You can create them, but you can modify. Yeah, but you can modify on the fly. You can make, you know, you could change yeah, up spells in a way. Those, those so three hard. spells. So what? we should talk about those those the the few spells that they added for wizards. So first off, uh, memorize spell is a, th a third level spell that lets you basically swap out your spells in the middle of the day rather than having to take a long yeah. rest. It's a ritual thing, so you can do it. <laughs> Anytime you want. You're like, you know what? These aren't the right spells for today. I'll switch them out now. I'll switch them out, Which, yeah. That makes so I, much more sense, though, for a wizard. It does make some sense, but it also... Like, why do you have to add a spell to do that? So that it takes well, up a spell like, slot? Just to add more roleplay? But it's like, a ritual. You can ritual cast it. So it doesn't oh, you can ritual cast slot. it. I don't know. So that it can't be ever a part of any other... They're keeping it out of the domain of... Classes combat. or a thing that have no, 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 not just combat, but other things that allow you to pull spells from other caster spell lists. They've seemed to they've wall. It's a walled garden now. I don't know. I, I liked the fact that you had to prepare spells every day and you just had to like, this is what I think I'm going to need. This is what I, I think we will need. I think I, liked that. I like I think that I think thematically it makes sense for a wizard. It doesn't make sense for a druid or anything or a cleric who knows their entire spell list. But see, a wizard just, doesn't know. A wizard only knows the spells that they have written in their book. I think it's fine. I think it's a, a minor thing. At it is most. a minor thing, but it's like, why? It's a, they did it weird. And it's good. Than just Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mechanically, 
how you feel about it is as a side mechanically it's pretty dang good why why do you think it's good mechanically a ritual to swap out your spells with any other spell in your spell book that's insane oh guys we're sneaking up on this building what do we need oh we need knock i don't have that in my spell book give me 10 minutes boom done you don't have to take a short rest you don't have to take a long we need to get the truth out of this guy give me 10 minutes okay zone of truth yep it's good all the, truth the spell, time. I don't yeah, know if it's the truth is. But it's just like <laughs> it's incredibly it's fine. good. It's fine. It's very good. It's very good. Create spell. It's weird that I don't understand why they are even making wizards have to prepare a spell list. Is what I'm saying. You can why also just, you always have all the spells that are in your spell book available. Because then that's too powerful, right? Is it? Yes, because clerics and druids have all the spells, but you have to prepare them. If you had a wizard that had a potential of, I think, 27 spells is how many spells you can have in your book. If you had access to all 27 at any time and the only limitation was spell slots. You can have every spell that is available to wizards in your book if your DM gives you those spells. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you imagine how broken that is? (laughs) You have to limit (laughs) it some way. You still have limited spell slots, though, right? Yeah, but if I could pick anything any time, I mean, you almost can with Memorize Spell, but at least there's the 10-minute penalty, and you can only have one at a time. If I had them all, all the time, I could be a god. I could just, I could pick Wizard, fill my entire thing up, and then multi-class into Sorcerer, get meta magic, and I would be unstoppable. (laughs) Yeah, it's, I mean, it's fine. It's just, it's weird to me. It's like, what situation am I in? Ah, let me twin spell or whatever that they changed twin spell damn it i said that they uh (laughs) you could heighten your spell you could do all kinds of stuff right it would be broken but having a spell list that's fine having a big book and being able to swap it out i think that's a cool thematic change and that's also a mechanically incredible change that i would be surprised if it doesn't get like a per day limitation yeah i I feel like you you can't even like multiclassing into sorcerer to, to abuse that wouldn't even be as good. You only as have to would, is you only could, you only have to get level two in sorcerer now to get sorcery points. Yeah, but then you only get two. Like you can do then it you get once three, and, and three. they lowered the cost of some of them. Yeah, they changed that. They upped it to three. It's still not many though. It's not like full on sorcerer ready to kill everything. Anyway, uh, the other two create spell. You can now active. You can also. Not to get too sidetracked, I think you can also activate multiple meta magics on the same cast now. Uh, yeah, I think you can. I think you could before. There was just some that said you could, and the default was. I think they're all now. You can just like. Uh, modify spell is the big new one that everyone's talking about. So the casting time is a minute, or you can do it as a ritual. Yeah. For eleven minutes total. Yeah. You can, let's say, using your arcane formulas in your spellbook, you can magically alter one arcane spell you have prepared. You can change the spell's color, sound, smell, and make one of the following modifications to the spell. You can remove the spell's components, verbal, somatic, or material. You can't remove the material component of a spell that consumes the component. You can, if the spell requires concentration, you can make it to where uh, damage can't break your concentration on the spell. You can change the damage type and replace it with acid, cold, fire, lightning, necrotic, poison, or thunder. Yeah. Uh, You can change the range. If the spell has a range of at least five feet and doesn't have a range of self, uh, increase its range by a number of feet equal to 30 times your wizard level. So if you're level 10, that's 300 feet, right? Am I doing the math right here? Sounds like I'm tossing (laughs) 300 feet. A fireball. (laughs) fireball uh if the spell lacks a ritual tag and has the casting time of at least 10 minutes you can give it the ritual tag okay that's That's so that's super strong that's so strong that makes everything that takes a spell slot that takes on the 10 minutes to cast is now a ritual that's bonkers how many are there there's like there's like magnificent mansion i think and there's not a whole lot that that uh that one i cast in the last one the big illusion one Okay. I had to but use yeah, a source. Again, I had no, use source I don't feel like that's 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 very it can be very there's cool, a, but it's not it's very them. it's very specific. There's not a whole lot of It's the it makes the best ritual caster in the game. 
hands down. Well, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, absolutely. It's insane. Uh, you, if the spell targets one or more creatures and doesn't have a range of self, it now affects only your allies or enemies. That's the broken one, right? That's the one that you become the ultimate evoker. <laughs> Say that one one more time. That's the one that if if uh, if the spell affects one or more creatures, it oh, doesn't okay. have a range of self. It can now affect only your allies or enemies. So yeah. you can cast a fireball right in the middle of all your buddies, and it doesn't affect your enemies, even if you're not an evoker. Yeah, so, that's the that's the hunger of Hadar thing too. Yeah, yeah, you were saying yeah. hunger of Hadar is on the wizard list now, which I don't like. <laughs> it's, like it's a warlock spell. Let, let them have their thing. <laughs> <laughs> but the spell lists aren't aren't the separating factor. The separating factor is only what the characters get in their own. Like instead of having seven, instead, yeah. Anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the big deal. And then you could um, uh, when you cast it at higher levels, uh, if you cast it at fifth level or higher, you can choose an additional spell modification for each slot above fourth. Which, if it's a ritual spell, it doesn't matter if you cast it at a higher level when you're doing yeah. it as a ritual. So you could just cast it at ninth level and give it all the modifications. And, <laughs> and then it's the most busted spell in the world. Uh, create spell, which works with you. So you, you uh, the casting time is reaction in response to yourself. Casting modify spell. Yeah. Uh, you synthesizing, you have to concentrate on it for an hour and it takes a thousand gold per level of the spell altered by modify spell. And you can concentrate for an hour and meditate on the spell that you just altered with modify spell. Otherwise, the spell fails. If you succeed, you must start casting scribe spell, which is a different spell we're going to talk about within yeah. the next 10 minutes and add your, the altered spell to your spell book. Once the spell is in your spell book, it becomes one of your known spells. It gains the wizard source tag rather than the arcane tag and it gains a name of your choice so you can cr literally just create spells with all these different uh yep. modifications on them and just cast it whenever and you could super broke <laughs> you could you could i think that this is a really cool thematic change you could be I a think, wizard i think it's the best thematic change uh, yeah it's, it's incredible so <laughs> you could you could make a wizard whose spell book was entirely 100 spells of your own creation But it is very expensive. <laughs> so you got to have a lot. Yeah, of you're right. Well, sorry. When you're level 20, you start experimenting a little bit. You got <laughs> tons of cash in the bank. Yeah. And then scribe spell, which is uh, basically the, just they made it a spell uh, to. You could be a guy. Now, I guess. OK, so. here's the character idea for this. You're a, you're a wizard who's adventuring so that he can research new spells and sell them back to the like trade society so that he can make money on his and and that's how all he your funds character ideas are capitalists that's how he makes <laughs> that's how he gets more funding to do more spell research to get better <laughs> spells it's incredible it's a, it's a it's cyclical dude you, you release a bang or spell you're like guys magical voice to everyone's head i new drop today by the legendary <laughs> spell crafter and i'm only a thousand of them are being sold <laughs> and you had to be there to get it so yeah so those those that's the new thing that's super busted for wizards i mean it's completely controlled by your dm and how much gold they're going to give you but i feel like it's a little strong I, and i th that's the thing that i kind of already was like suggesting that wizards should be able to do although Great. less specific i don't feel like you need those modifications i think you can just come i up think with spells in your own. I, I think that them spelling it out so clearly in the rules is the key to players being able to actually do it yeah it, it definitely is but it's also so broken that if you get if you have unlimited gold it's only as which, broken as your dm allows it to be right well, not, the, the DM I mean, could guess. the DM could shut down anything. So if you go, I want this spell to be completely fucking busted, and they could just be like, <laughs> okay, well, you can't make that modification. Try something else. You know, it fails. You try to make that <laughs> modification and it fails. You know, you can't. But then they're like, but the rules say it can. <laughs> it says right here that it can do that. Not in when, this game, homeboy. <laughs> I got to say, when have we ever gone by that? <laughs> 
Yeah, but it's I feel like it it's... has to be a very specific group for you to be like, well, don't go with Shady Shadow. Or you, maybe you just have to be like an incredibly sticky stickler Isn't about that what the your rules. Group was like, Everybody yes. had to, had to read it. I know, I hate it. <laughs> it was awful. The pace of the game was so slow. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's broken. It's super busted, but it's real cool. Um, also, I want to talk about Sorcerer's Burst, which is a new cantrip for sorcerers. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a it's a it's a ranged attack roll, spell attack roll. Uh, on a hit, the target takes one d six damage. However, if you roll a six on that d six, you can roll another d six and add it to the damage. Wherever, whenever you cast a spell, the maximum number of these d6s you can add to the spell's damage equals your spell casting ability modifier. So you can, and then the cantrip um, upgrades, like every other cantrip, goes to 2d6 at fifth level, 3d6 at 11th, and 4d6 at 17th. But you can add up to 5d6 if you get yeah. lucky enough. If you get lucky enough. Uh, I think yeah, it's man. cool. I like it. It is cool. That is really cool. It's not, I mean, on average, it's not going to be any better than, it's going to be worse than Firebolt, but it, I still like it. Do we want to talk about meta magic now? Uh Oh, I did want to talk about Sorceress Vitality. Hit me with this, what you think about Sorceress Vitality. So, from what I can tell, this comes from a specific, I think you get to like level 7 Sorcerer or something. Uh-huh but you can heal yourself for 2d6 plus your spell casting ability modifier. It's a third That's, level spell. And I think it's weirdly placed. I think it's weirdly. Uh, pl- yeah, I, I agree. I feel like for the level of spell it is, the healing's not that great. It's kind of a waste of a spell slot. I just think it's weirdly placed for like. A the game was in the game. You could heal like that already. It's just that. Remember, it was it was the level 20 thing to be able to heal yourself. I don't remember that. Yeah, Sorceress Restoration. Was that? I thought that I'm was pretty the sure. level 20 Sorcerer thing was... Uh, like Let's look extra, it up. Uh, something dumb. I'm uh, pretty sure I'm right. It is. Yeah, Sorcerer's Restoration. You expend four Sorcery points. Oh, you it just lets you regain four expended Sorcery points when you finish a short rest. That's all it does. Oh, is that what it is? Okay, yeah. maybe I was wrong. I was wrong. But I think it's weirdly placed just because there's essentially there's one subclass of sorcerer that allows you to be a, a healer. And I'm yeah. like, oh, well, that's cool. But then this is like, but you can always heal yourself if you're a sorcerer at a certain level. And I was like, uh, OK, I guess. So now it's, you get that. That is the one. I feel like that's the one kind of miss on the sorcerer. It also, Everything I, oh, else I, the sorcerer changed great and pretty much. It also ends blinded, deafened or poisoned on you. That's pretty good. No, that's all right. I mean, it's just not that great. I, yeah. I'm trying to hype myself up, but it's 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 just OK. It's, it's all right. fine spell. It's just I. it's thematically weird for me. Yeah, like, it's oh, a little also, odd. I can heal myself. Like, uh-huh. right. yeah. <laughs> why? Why can you do that? Well, let's go ahead and do the last one. Then we've done arc interruption. Sorcery, 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 sorcery incarnate. That was pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, fifth level transmutation spell. This is the thing. Sorcery Incarnate, it allows you to use the two meta magic effects. Uh yeah, the magic within you blooms, transform blah blah blah. You gain you regain one D4 sorcery points. Uh until the spell ends, you also gain the following benefits. You can choose you can use up to two of your meta magic op- options on each spell you cast, provided you pay the sorcery points cost. You have advantage on the attack rolls of every spell you cast. So that's cool. I like that. That's it's awesome. A minute it's uh, really concentration. High, though, fifth it is. Level. Yeah, fifth levels is pretty high. Uh, but being able to do two meta magics on one spell, that could be yeah. a lot of fun. And having advantage for the and game having game advantage game. while you're doing it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. It could be a ton of fun. So yeah, those are the spells. Uh, next up, we got you want to do meta magic, right? Uh, we can go through like. We did. We didn't finish going through the warlock spells. We can cover the rest of the warlock source unique spells since uh, we're already here. I don't know if you've guys seen it yet, but it on like the feats and stuff. It says you can go to a maximum of thirty. For what? Oh, for your for your uh, like strength attributes and dexterity. Yeah. Oh, nice. I missed that. That's awesome. You can go up to thirty. 
That's sick. That's actually it's because twenty. Though, they're right? probably pushing it after twenty because of the epic boons and everything. I think I don't know. I'd have to read it again. Uh, the other warlock specific spells I think are all packed familiar and packed weapon. Yeah, they're all the things that we thought we we touched on it. It's just all the stuff of the packs. They changed it into spells instead of features. The packed okay. weapon is pretty good though. You get to add and you use your spell casting instead of like shrink or dex. Yeah, you that's can do you it. Do that. You could do that with you your packed weapon more. anyway. Yeah, but it's done. But now that it's not unique, I mean, sorry. Now that it's uh, they they I honestly made it worse because now you can't have a heavy weapon. <laughs> so no big swords let me read that one more time i want to look that up real quick. yeah and these these spells not it's these like it's a warlock spell but not all warlocks are going to get packed weapon only ones who take that pact packed familiar packed a weapon i want to read this one more time okay so he's going to out the bond with the magic weapon you touch the magic weapon you conjure a touch must lack the heavy property in the spell Fails if you touch a magic item that is tuned for someone else for the duration of what we're going to talk about. Blah, blah, blah. Elders Warrior, when you attack with the weapon, you can use spell kind of ability of a modifier to attack damage rolls instead of using strength of dex. Have efficiency of the weapon. If the weapon has your throne property. The weapon returns to your hand immediately. So you could dip into Warlock for two levels, get this, and then get... And then... Yeah, that's bro. about the only thing that is good about it. Yeah. Warlock. Yeah, it's just it's, it's it doesn't really change anything. It's just the it's a spell instead of a feature now. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, yeah, warlocks underwhelming. So, but we're not going to talk about warlocks right now. We're going to talk about the the difference. I guess is that uh, let me find it. Hold on, you get your pact. Hold on, I got to find the thing. Find it. Find it. Find it. There it is. You get your pact at level one in Warlock now instead of level three. So you can okay. dip into Warlock for one level and get hacked and get packed weapon, packed blade, which I don't know why you would. It's not that good. I don't think maybe I'm missing something, but yeah, the Warlock's just not that good, dude. Well, just the packs. I mean, you I, I might dip into it for well. You might dip into it for fine familiar, right? Because if you can get but find familiar oh, you'd have is to, you'd have to go in second level for the invocations to get the good familiar. I don't know. Anyway, I read a I read a really funny thing. I I've I read the uh, RPG bot did a write up of this new PHB right, mm-hmm. and I was reading. There's one. There was one section of the warlock thing which I thought was hilarious, which was. He said the warlock is also notoriously easy source of multi class abuse. Lockadins, Bardlocks, Sorglocks, etc. All became staple multi-class builds when the 2014 PHB launched, only to be supplanted by the Hexblade, which I often refer to as the MSG of subclasses, because you can put it on so many things that they magically work better no, with no real effort. So, allowing this Pact of the Blade, and he said, that's, that's where I got this, is like, now it's not just a problem for only, it's a problem for both wisdom and charisma based builds it's got he's got even more versatility now than it did before for multi-classing and the and and the and the class itself doesn't seem to stand on its own very well like it's not it's not good compared to wizard and sorcerer that's for damn sure or fighter 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 came out on top too fighter looks great maybe that's what they were going for they were going this will be perfect multi-class maybe and maybe, but like I, I feel like that's fine. But the the class does need to maybe stand up on its own, past like level three or whatever. It needs something of its own. It needs something that makes it better. It's just not that good. That's all I. That's all I. I don't really have anything else to talk about with Warlog. If there's something interesting you want to talk about about the class, otherwise, I think I think we can just like drop Warlock off the rest of this. <laughs> Uh, we're going to talk about the spell oh, let list me, later. Let me double check because I had notes before we leave Warlock. Let me double check. Uh, they all get medium armor now. Yeah, saw that. Oh, oh my gosh, where is it? This thing is too long. It there is a is long okay. document. Uh, please. Move the packed boons, packed magic. Yeah, the the, the difference is that they changed the spell slots. You get a bunch of them now, but 
their long rest, so I don't like that. That was like the one thing that I thought Warlocks were really cool for is they could get spell slots back on a short rest, but no more. No more short uh, no more short rest. Um Eldritch Invocation now caps out at nine instead of eight, but that's because they take away Mystic Arcanum. Uh the invocations, there's a lot. So I don't do you you want to go over all of them? I don't. <laughs> I don't either. But there's a there's, lot of them. They'll probably get changed anyway, so I um, don't I think the warlock will get changed more for the better in a revision of this, and I think the the other ones might get brought down just a little. Yeah. Maybe. Is my prediction. We want there's to talk a about of, bunch of invocations, which are the coolest part of I mean that that is the coolest part of Warlock is Eldritch invocations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and the fact that they give you one extra, but they take away Mystic Arcanum feels bad because like you almost have to take Mystic Arcanum at some point. Yeah. To, to be a caster, right? Uh, and you it's repeatable now, so you could just take it over and over again. But at that point, it's like I don't have in my other cool invocations. So Do we I, want to talk I, I feel about, like Warlock needs some work. We want to talk about Fiend real quick while we're here, I guess. Sure. I said I didn't want to talk about it, but might as well just hit hit it real quick. Um, just kind of like clear the the highlights. Dark one's own luck. Number of time per long rest, not short rest, baby. No more short rest. No more short rest <laughs> in all of D and D. No one shall rest for. <laughs> you cannot be healed in only an hour. Every uh, time now, all the new players, you're gonna be like, ah, oh, man, can we take a short rest? And they're gonna be like, why short rest? I've never heard of that. Uh. uh Fiendish uh, resilience, uh, yeah, channeling the preternatural resilience of uh, preternatural resilience of fiends. You can choose one damage type other than force whenever you finish a short rest, other than <gasps> force or long rest. You, uh, regain, you gain resistance to that damage type until you choose a different one. So that's cool, great. Um, that's a 10th level, okay, yeah, all uh, right, through okay. that one, and then th- hurl through hell when you hit a creature. Oh, yeah, attack roll. Uh, you can use this feature to instantly transport the target through the lower planes. The creature disappears and hurtles through a nightmare landscape at the end of your next turn. The creature returns uh, to the space it previously occupied or the nearest unoccupied space. If the target is not a fiend, it must make a wisdom save against your spell save upon its return. On a failed save, it takes 10 d10 psychic damage. On a successful save, it takes half as much. Once you use that feature, you can't use it again until you take long rest unless you spend a fourth level slot when you do it again it's the world's Ta-da. trippiest like 10 second roller coaster ride for one guy <laughs> we <laughs> i'm back oh no oh, it hurts uh, my oh, head i got a headache now <laughs> the lights, they were too bright. It was all right so let's get, get back up to uh start at the top barbarian oh dude Oh yeah, barbarians. The barbarians are beefy boys now, dude. <laughs> like they were already before. They just got buffs. I don't see anything <laughs> that says no buff. I have yeah, like, it, it they're, seems they're even buffer. Yeah. I have a bit of a question mark on one of these things. All right. So what do you got a question about? At level two, you get primal knowledge. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> While your rage is active, you can channel primal power when you attempt certain tasks. Whenever you make an ability check using one of the following skills, you can make it as a strength check, even yep. if it normally uses a different ability. Here's the list. Acrobatics. I can. Oh, OK, maybe. Intimidation. I get that. Perception. What? <laughs> you got really <laughs> strong eyeballs. Got no, muscles on them. No, we're in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, dude. Stealth, <laughs> I'm gonna flex so hard no one's gonna see me. <laughs> or flexes, survival. Dude, what? Isaac, he's he's flexing the light around his body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are so weird. It's such a strange little mishmash of abilities that you can use with strength. I love okay, it. sure. Uh oh, only while man. you're raging, so okay, I guess, but that's still super weird. Uh yeah, that's weird. It's real weird. Um you also have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. So in theory, yeah. you would get advantage on every one of those checks you would make because you'd be using strength oh, instead yeah. of what it normally is. 
whatever. Yeah. That's super weird. Um, otherwise, what else we got here? We got rage. indomitable. You can, oh, you yeah. Can continue your rage with a bonus action instead of. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to take damage attacking. anymore. That's um, a buff. That's super huge. I, I mean, I like the, the change. The rage is less. I would rather them have to punch themselves in the face for it. Honestly, the rage is less, but it doesn't <laughs> matter now. The rage is less ten minutes now. Well, yeah, but it still would fall off if you the, weren't hitting. Uh, unarmored defense got buffed. It was eight plus your dex and con modifiers. Now it's ten. Pretty so, sure. Yeah. Um. What's this? Indomitable might Feral is very good. Is at level seven. Your instincts are so honed that you have advantage on initiative rolls and dexterity saving throws. Yeah. So, That's... any fireballs coming your way, you're hopping out of there. <laughs> uh, uh, brutal critical got changed. It's an extra damage now. It scales with your level. Yep. Right. Here's a big change. This, this is pretty wild. Uh, level nine. Indomitable might. Yes, this if is the one total, I was looking at. If your total for a strength check is less than your strength score, you can use the score in place of that. So you're always taking twenty on strength checks. <laughs> no, you're taking your. Uh... Oh yeah, 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 you're, yeah. You're you're pretty you're much guaranteed. Twenty. You're almost guaranteed. Yeah. And that's while you're raging, you're, you're, you're never that. getting below a 20 on your perception checks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so mad. I'm looking um, everywhere. <laughs> brutal critical at level 11. That's a big one. Yeah. Uh, when you score a critical hit with a weapon or an unarmed strike using your strength, the target takes extra damage equal to your barbarian level. That damage is the same type dealt by that weapon or unarmed. So every turn when you're level 15, you just hit something. 15 off the rip. Okay, well, it's so on a crit, right? I right. think this is one. Yeah, uh, it's, it's on a crit. This is one I got some good, uh, good info on over here on RPG Bot. Is that it sounds like a ton, but with three attacks with a great axe, the actual damage per round boost is only around one point nine over over normal. Really? Yep. So it, it's really pretty balanced. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's, it's a moderate just, it's buff. It's just more uh, consistent. They brought yeah. in uh, the uh, they basically said uh, you like uh, Path of the Zealot. Well, we'll just slap that into the class. <laughs> <laughs> Persistent rage. Your rage is so fierce at level thirteen, it lasts for ten minutes. Yep. And the rage still ends when you're incapacitated. At level fifteen, you get relentless rage. Your rage keeps you fighting despite grievous wounds. If you drop to zero hit points. While you rage is active and don't die outright, you can make a DC 10 constitution saving throw and go back to one hit point or go back to what is it? Hit points instead to change your that, number equal to your barbarian level. So yeah, that was the thing from the path, right? No, that's level 15. But that was in the original. It was from from a certain path, I thought. Yeah, it was like Path of the Zealot would let you like yeah, yeah, yeah. keep coming Unless back. You not die. But yeah, then it gets it gets die. even better at level seventeen. Yeah. Whenever you roll initiative, you regain an expended use of rage. So if you're out of rages, every time you enter a combat, roll initiative. You get a new one. Yeah, you, you can, can you could rage, rage at any time. Yeah. Anytime you need to perceive something, you're just like, ah! and then you're like, okay, I'm good now. <laughs> I'll get another one back when we start combat. <laughs> at level yeah. eighteen, yeah. you 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 just get more buff. Uh, your strength and con modifiers go up by two just because. Yeah, yeah, that's I mean that's normal. That's you do that currently. Uh with barbarians. Barbarians are beef boys. And the yeah. path of the berserker got immensely better. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it yeah, the frenzy thing. It's, it's, even, it's worth a consideration now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like actually good now. Yeah. The frenzy is so much just so much better. You don't get exhausted whenever you frenzy. Yeah. Uh all it does is add extra damage to you whenever you use your reckless attack. So you're going to constantly be recklessing. Yep, all the time. Still has mindless ra rage, so you can't be charmed or frightened, and it ends them if you are. This is what Michael's... Isn't Michael a berserk? Yeah. Yeah, he should, he should adopt this. Yeah. <laughs> then he'll be strong. 
yeah, I'd be willing to let him try this out. It it does seem a lot cooler. You get instead of like because currently the way it works is you can uh hit with a bonus action, I believe, on your next round, because you rage is a bonus action on your next round. Yeah. If you chose to frenzy before, you can get one more hidden as a as your frenzy as as a bonus action. But now it the way it works is uh whenever you hit the first time on a turn on a round, uh you get to add extra damage that is equal to two D six uh or the D six times your rage damage bonus. So if you have two dam uh rage damage bonus, you roll two D six on your first hit extra. Which I think yeah. is I, that's great. I like it. Yeah. Barbarian was pretty much all ups, all pluses, dude. Uh, barbarian was solid. Yeah. I want to what play next? one of these barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go? Uh, oh, they I can't use range the weapon. They can't use range weapons. Okay, because they're all decks. And barbarians can't use range weapons. Well, that makes sense because they're decks based. So yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to anyway because none of your like your reckless. You still use. You could like still that. use throne, right? I want to be. A, um, I always want to do a thrown weapon. I guess. But I guess I'd do a rogue. I'd be like a little rogue, a little rogue warlock. <laughs> Just throwing out darts and summon them back. <laughs> <laughs> or ninja stars. <laughs> there you go. There we go. All right. Yep. Fighter. Um. What did they change? Weapon masteries. You get weapon masteries now. You get one at level one. And then how does it work? You get like two more. One at seven and one at thirteen. I think. For what? Like Say this again. Weapon for master. Weapon you master start with three. For five. Oh yeah. So yeah. It is? Okay. You start with three, and then at level four you get four, and then at level ten you get five, and that goes to the rest. But you can constantly yeah. switch them out. So like, if you're like, I want to try using a crossbows, sword, or yeah. So I'm gonna start training with it. You train with it during your downtime while you're resting, and then you switch it out with one of the ones you have. I think that's so awesome. Because how many times have I been playing a character where I'm like, man, I'd really like to n- not use this weapon anymore. And now there's like a thematic reason for you to change. And it actually has impact. It's not just like, and I pick up a different sword. And now it does a little <laughs> more damage. Uh, st- that's so cool. Yeah. Second Wind I mean, got reworked. They get yep. back to back different. feats at four and five. Yep. It's just, which is really strange, I think. <laughs> Uh, uh your- action surge got a nerf. Yes, it did. Uh, and indomitable got changed a little bit. Oh, let me find it. So action surge now instead of just because I think this was being used to sort of subvert. I think I think indomitable uh, one, is one spell per round thing because you could action surge and you'd get a whole another set of actions. Now yeah, it specifies yeah, yeah. that it has to That's be about, yeah a uh, attack dash disengage or dodge. Yeah, I jumped. I jumped ahead. I thought we were talking about Indomitable. Uh, Indomitable, though, it's if you fail the saving throw, you can reroll it with a bonus equal to your fighter levels, which I like. That's really Uh, good because if you're gonna if you're gonna waste, you know, if you're gonna use an Indomitable to try to get out of a save, didn't it have a minus one? Have some kind of bonus on it. Didn't have a minus one too. I guess advantage is good. No, it wasn't a minus one. It was just you got advantage, which is good. But if you still fail, it's like, well, I can't use that again for a long time. <laughs> but now that you can use it at your fighter level, fighter level, so at least it'll add it at least nine because that's when you get it. So it's pretty good. Like it's pretty good. That's pretty dang good. Yep. Uh, weapon adept level fourteen. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, this is really cool. This is really cool. Oh, it's thirteen. Uh, um. You are a master of weapons. When you use a weapon, your weapon expert feature on a kind of weapon, you can give that kind of weapon two properties rather than one, but <clears throat> you then use only one property at a time. Whenever you make an attack roll against the target with that kind of weapon, you decide which of the two properties applies to that attack. You make this decision before the attack hits or misses. For example, you could apply the push and topple properties to the longsword, and whenever you hit a creature with a longsword, you decide which of those properties to use against the target. That's cool. Yeah. There's a little flexibility. That's pretty awesome. I think that's super cool. 
Like it adds a lot of variance to the class. And it's pretty high up there, so you don't really have to worry about it in the early levels. It's not super abusable. And by the time you're 14, everything's kind of... That's that's pretty high up there, I feel like. Yep. Uh, they did release one of the subclasses, a champion, which was like the, the, the vanilla-est of the vanilla classes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they changed a little bit. Um, now you get some RP stuff early. Yeah. Um, whenever you finish a long rest, you can gain a proficiency in one skill uh, from those available to this class at level at first level. Uh, as you remind yourself of past lessons and it lasts until the end of your next long rest. So you basically get an extra proficiency in something that you could have grabbed That's pretty good. Didn't. Yep. Um, you get an additional fighting style at six heroic warrior thrill of the battle. <clears throat> drives you towards victory once per combat you can give yourself heroic advantage if uh, you start your turn without it cool um, once once per combat yeah once per combat that's pretty yeah. good yep um survivor you can defy death advantage on death saving throws uh, when you roll an 18 to 20 on a death save yep, you gain you the get up. rolling a 20 that's pretty cool that's pretty good uh tripling your chance of getting up essentially yeah that's awesome um <clears throat> at the start of each of your turns you regain hit points equal to 5 plus your con modifier if you have no more than half your hit points i left. think this is i think this is a perfect update to like a really beginner friendly class like it's more fun more interesting still easy still easy yeah, still easy. Like I wouldn't pick champion still, even with this update. But <laughs> but you can crit on an eighteen to twenty. <laughs> <laughs> but Rune Knight's just too good, dude. Rune Knight is busted. But they may be it may be gone for maybe maybe it, maybe it's gone. <laughs> no, it's not because it's backwards compatible, it's compatible. With all the credible <laughs> stuff. It's not gone. Uh, so that's fighter. Um. What now? Sorcerer. I did want to talk a little bit about this Sorcerer. because I still am on the fence about whether or not I like getting your subclass at three. I think getting your subclass at Sorcerer at level one is what makes sense. What makes sense. Now, you could write a character be like, I just got these powers. I don't know where they came from. And then as you level up, you're like, you discover where they come from. And then you at third level, you're like, oh, I found it. But that's yeah. like, I feel like that's a lot more to add to your DM trying to fix that's that cool. in there, which is fine if that's what you want to do. Uh, but I feel like some but like not all magic stuff should be that's not necessary. You know, I mean, early. I don't I, I feel like I feel like if you're worried about if you're worried about it thematically, it can make total sense because you could have a character that is. Let's say this. You're you're a campaign, you're starting at three, you have no problem. The guy already has his ability, he knows he has his ability, he's leveled up, right? If you're starting at level one, it gives time for a character to maybe they're just now starting to discover their magic and they're thinking about adventuring and they join a party, and then later on they figure out, you know, what kind of power that they have, what kind of power they have. Don't think of it like outside of the character where you're picking, where you get to pick what thing which you could before just you picked it at level one instead of level three. So think of your character gets some experience under his belt and then he discovers his power instead of he just has it all the time. Yeah. And again, that's like, I guess it's just to bring it in line with other classes. Yeah. Then the argument they gave was like, it's a lot for, especially for a new player to choose at level one. Kind of is, I guess. But at the same time, like. I feel I like sorcerers know. have always been with the limited spell list and everything. They were one of the easier casters anyways, I felt to play, maybe not to set up. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's fine, I guess. It's just I I still like the idea of it being at level one, because then you like e even if you don't. For sure, know where it comes from. You get these yeah. like features that you're like, oh, this is happening and it's weird. And I don't know where this particular thing is coming from, but it looks like this, right? It looks like dragon things or it looks yeah. like dark thing. You know, it looks like the subclass. Yeah. Whereas now every sorcerer at level one, just like I'm exactly like everybody else. <laughs> but you do get meta magic at level two. Yeah, that's fine. I think you got what, level three before. Yep. 
brought down a level. Uh, I don't know. I still like having sorcerer subclass at level one, but to each his or her own. I don't um, think I don't think that change is enough. I think o- overall the stuff that they got was pretty nice. Oh yeah, as far as the mechanical stuff, it's it, odd. It's only it's odd because job. sorcerers were already good. It's weird they changed it so much, but they just changed it to homogenize it to make it more like the other classes. Yeah. The great pancaking of rules. <laughs> as much as I lo- as much as I love, this is one of the better UAs that have come out in a while. But it is still just like a can we can we mush this all together so that it's super readable from a distance. Yeah, and I get like kind of why you'd want to do that right because if oh, you I get, played a, if I, you I, a, I pl- yeah i played a wizard first i want to go play sorcerer oh it's pretty similar so you're not like yeah to relearn. But, and also it's like you can it's for if you're running an adventure you don't have to have certain classes to make it go right but at the same time i like having different classes do specific things i think yeah. that's fun but whatever <laughs> like um, the poor druid hopefully it gets a rework yeah well it's 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 like world of warcraft i mean probably in other mmos as well but like in vanilla world of warcraft each class did something very well right yeah but now and it's now all they kind all of... kind of do the same thing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like oh we it's, need aoe it, we got to bring a mage now it's like it's we need because AOE. well every class has aoe so <laughs> yeah it's because it's because as a thing gets more popular you need to you kind of shave some of the uniqueness off so that it has more mass appeal. Yeah, and I don't oh, like that. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't like it when it's said like that, but like some of these well, changes, I mean, you guys, we've been different. we've been pumping up these changes, a lot of them, other than Warlock. And like... Yeah, it's some of the changes fun. I like, but whenever yeah. do, I don't like exactly what we were talking about. It was a Warlock. Stop making it like all the other casters. Make it completely different. It's more like a ranger now than a... Than yeah, a, caster. It's a half caster. Yeah, but now you get Mystic Arcana, but you have to choose it. You have to waste one of your invoke. But you don't want to waste them because it's it's not worth. It. Just play a wizard <laughs> if you want to be a caster. I don't know. It's in a weird place. I think well, that you might waste really one of your work. invocations, but you're not going to be wait. But you don't have to waste one on like agonizing blast because at fifth level, all of your spells will do it if you take the right thing. We'll have Perhaps. that plus to your they... damage. Okay. I thought I saw agonizing blast on there. Anyway, anyways, I don't want to go back to warlock sorcerers. <laughs> Ooh, warlocks are they're dumb. Um, sorcerer, the meta magic moved from third to two to second, like you said. Yeah. Uh, sorcerer, the sorcerer's fatality. That Healy thing is now at fifth level. That's the yep. thing you get. Yep. Uh, arcane eruption. We talked about that already. It's the seventh level. Yep. Uh, sorcery incarnate. We talked about. I think we already talked about that. <clears throat> you get that at night. Yeah. Um, arcane uh, apotheosis. Yes, this is this is very good. So you are now this so suffused little... with magic that you can alter reality itself. You always have the wish spell prepared, and if you undergo the spell's casting stress, you have no chance of losing the ability to cast the spell. In addition, you can cast wish to replicate a spell of first through eighth level without expending a ninth level spell slot. You instead spend a <clears throat> expend a spell slot. Of the replicated spells level. Once you use the uh, wish in this way, you can't do so again until you finish the long rest. I honestly uh, can't I like fucking that. believe this. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't this like this. This is unreal. This is so strong, dude. This is oh, wish built into your character. Sorcerers can cast any spell. First through eighth. First you can replicate eight. any spell yeah. once a day without expending a spell slot, a level nine spell slot. Yep. And then so you, you can just cast can... wish. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had all my spell slots back. <laughs> Why is everyone to... anyone ever wish for that? <laughs> because that's lame. You could just wish to win the fight. <laughs> I wish this fight was over. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I don't want them to. I don't want them to make wish any stronger. It doesn't need to be any stronger for anyone. I was I was it doesn't honest... need to be in the game. <laughs> yeah, I was honestly like, I I love I love how dumb wish is. I realistically, I think it is banned from most people's home games. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. So they just keep it in there because, ooh, wish, you know. Yeah. But you just had as a DM, you have to be like, wish no. can be abused. And <laughs> I need to figure out how it can be abused. So I'm not blindsided by all these weird. 
Yeah. All right. I, uh, just. It's they, very. They need, I think they need to limit wish, not expand wish. <laughs> Well, they didn't expand it, really. Not a ton. I mean, they did, because now that you have no chance of losing the ability to cast a spell. Yeah, that's true. So you can just wish in it. Wish for whatever you want. It doesn't matter, because you can, you're can. you going to be able to cast it. No and now what. you can do that, get a one through a spell of anything, and add meta magic to it, baby. <laughs> Shall we talk about meta magic now? Yeah, we got to talk about meta magic. So they ah. changed... Some things. Uh, careful yeah. spell now prevents an affected creature from taking half damage on a successful save. Um, Wait, say that one more time. <clears throat> uh, careful spell now prevents an affected creature from taking half damage on a successful save. Ah, uh, so, so yeah, so now you can fireball your friends, dude. A little easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they take no damage if they would normally yep, take. They half. would take no damage if they normally take half. You can be an evoker. Uh, kind of, not exactly. Kind of. <clears throat> um, distant spell increases spells range by a number of feet based on your sorcerer level rather than doubling its range. For most spells, this results in the greater increase. Uh, let's see what it says. I think exactly. I think you could misty step six hundred feet. That's dumb. Uh, when you cast a spell that has That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked if into myself. That's just on my red. Dimension door. One sorcery yeah. point to extend the spell's range by a number of feet equal to 30 times your sorcerer level. Super strong. That's so Most awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you could dimension, you could be like, oh, we're gonna, I'm gonna die here. No, nope, I'm across. I'm across, <laughs> dude. I'm, I'm on the other side of this mountain. <laughs> yeah, I'm on another continent now. Come catch me. Uh, yeah. Quicken spell now includes the clarification on how it interacts with the game's general rule on casting bonus action spells. Uh, so you can't cast two spells. Uh, it's spell just it's just clarifying. It's just combat. clarifying that you can't do that. You yeah. already couldn't do that. But yeah. in the original player's handbook, it was not in that. You had to go look for that. Right. Uh, seeking seeking spells moved to the this from from Tasha's. Yeah, which is you get a you can spend two sorcery points to re-roll if you miss basically and you have not to very good um subtle spell now also removes the need for material components unless it consumes the material components. so this was another this was i love rpg bot so much <laughs> this is another one of those wording things i think subtle spell now removes non-consumable material components right mm -hmm. yeah um this seems to include expensive components, which means that you could use this with spells like clone, simulacrum, and raise dead. Yeah, super dumb. I, I mean, I wouldn't allow it to work like that in my games, but even he said, "I'm assuming that's an error." Yeah, <laughs> there's no uh, way that would be in. That'd be just as broken as the wish thing, almost. Yeah, because you're getting it uh, a lot earlier. So the big thing is that they changed twin spell. They it's did been redesigned. No more twin. Because uh, they thought it, it was too powerful, which I didn't think that, but that's fine. Uh, so before you could just cast, if it you had a spell that you could cast, you could cast on two separate targets. Now, yeah. you, if like, if you cast a spell one turn, on your next turn, you can twin spell it and cast it again, but without using a spell slot. But it costs five sorcery points. Yeah. Yeah. But it, well, a three. It costs three. three. Cost three. So, but yeah, I don't know. It'd be like fireball, and then next bound be like fireball for for sorcery points instead of spell slot. I don't like. Yep. it. I liked twin spell the way it was. Twin spell was better than this. I feel like. I don't. Uh, I don't understand why they thought it was too powerful. They're like, it was too powerful. But it's because you, get, you wish. Could... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Take this free wish. Uh, it's because you could twin stuff like haste. So that's fine. Twin polymorph. Yeah. When you get twi when you get polymorph, twinning polymorph is pretty goddamn insane. It's 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 really cool, but I don't feel like it was overpowered. Like I feel like there are other ways to overcome it. So anyway. here's what you do. Here's what oh. you do, boss. These rules are backwards compatible. <laughs> you just but use the old decide. The DM. Okay. And if a player goes, hey, man, you think we could use twin spell the way it used to be? Because this new way is whack. <laughs> I like, yeah, like sure. the new way. Because before it was like, yes, you got to take twin spell because it's really cool. Now it's like, do I want to take twin spell? I don't. 
I don't know if I want it. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You take uh you could take heightened spell is what you should take. <laughs> Read me um, heightened spell. Heightened spell. When you cast a spell that forces a creature to make a saving throw uh to resist, you can spend two sorcery points to give one target of the spell disadvantage on its saving throws against the spell. I like that one. I That's so good. good. It got re- it got a reduction in cost. It was three sorcery points before. That is um, essentially silvery barbs. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats silvery barbs. <laughs> uh, and um, then they also they added they the subclass they chose to to showcase here is the draconic sorcery one, which I am not familiar with. Really, so can we I talk about all the meta magic. Uh, well, we talked about all the changed ones. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Uh, um, all right. Dragon magic. Draconic sorcery. Yeah. So let's see. You know, I'll just read the changes. From Draconic the sorcery. Um, Dragon magic. They just changed the, the names a little bit. Uh, they, they've been doing that Draconic, with everything. Wizards yeah. got the same treatment. Yeah. Uh, Draconic resilience now gives base AC. That is 10 plus your decks and charisma modifiers rather than 13 plus your decks. So it's, that's actually really good. It's a you could buff. It is, yeah. You could get up to was, you could get up to the AC of plate. Yeah, it was a max of eighteen. Now it's a max of twenty. Yeah. Um. You don't get draconic yeah. anymore. You get dragon uh, speech. Dragon speech lets you communicate with any creature that has the dragon type. The damage type uh, choice has moved to elemental affinity, which no longer charges a sorcery point for the resistance. In surveys, people have requested more uses. For the damage type associated with this feature, um, okay. Uh, draconic exhalation has replaced draconic presence, a low rated feature, and then uh, draconic wings now modifies sorcery incarnate and includes, yeah, so that you can only fly for a minute. Option they took away their ability to permanently fly, which is weird since you could just play an Aarakocra or something. Well, I think it's because Aarakocra are not a playable race in the official get together D and D, the Adventure League. Oh, are they not? Mm-mm. There's another flying player race, isn't there? I don't think there are any flying races that are available for Adventure League. Oh, for Adventurers League, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But are they balancing for Adventurers League? <laughs> Who knows, dude? I have is no Adventurers idea. League a bil- a really big draw? I know I, I recommend it all the time. I've never once played in Adventures League. <laughs> I've never, I've never played it. Never suggested it to anyone. So I suggest it to people all the time because I get really? that question all the yeah. Because people are like, "Where do I find groups?" And I'm like, "You go to game stores and you you meet people who want to play." I mean, I don't know what to tell you. the The only resource I know of for that is like that's not just a random Discord server or R slash D and D is. Yeah. I'm going to my local game store to play in the Adventurers League. Yeah. Uh, that that one, if you're in Adventurers League, that's where you abuse mechanics because they're forced to use what's written. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. Go, go <laughs> do it to some other poor guy. Go to Adventurers um, League and <laughs> don't do that. Don't be that dickhead. <laughs> that shows up and you're like, Hey guys, what's up? I'm new. And in your head, you're like, no, I'm not. My character is extremely <laughs> optimized. And you sit down, and you're like, I've never played before. And the DM's just, like, all right, guys, your first combat. And you're like, oh, wow. And you're like, oh, I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not 20s. I kill them all with one attack. I stack cleave and five other things. And I am a god. And I hit them all 10 feet in the air. <laughs> they all fall and take fall damage and are prone. I cleave <laughs> and then hit all of them with cleave. And then I push them all 10 feet in the air. Oh man. Uh yeah, don't do that. Don't <laughs> so do that. last do that. up, I think, is Wizard. Is that everything? Wizard, yes. Wizard would be the last thing. Oh, it was one thing after Wizard. Uh wizard? we talked about it a little bit already, but I want to make sure we touch on it. So okay. Wizards, um uh you can now use your spell book as a spell casting focus. That's I, awesome. I like that a lot. I didn't even know that you couldn't before i just always assumed oh. that you could so <laughs> nope so now you can actually be that wizard who holds his book open and goes i'm casting a spell <laughs> from my book instead of like you're holding whatever your focus is a, a wand your harry potter uh they got the, those three new spells um 
they get this thing called academic uh, arcane recovery is moved from first level to second level uh those the, the three spells uh memorize modify and create spell you get them at fifth seventh and ninth level yep um signature spells they move some things around the really the only change to just the class i think is the amount of spells you can have is well did they change that Yes, because it used to be dependent on your intelligence. Now there's just like a maximum number. Oh, 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 oh I thought you meant. Okay. Yeah, I never think of that because I always consider wizards to be have infinite spells as long as. Sorry, you not not in your spell book. Prepared. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Am I wrong? Okay, I don't know. No, I think I, you're. I think I, what I you read mean it. is the, the spells that you get when you level up. Yes. Yeah. 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 You get okay. a few more. Yeah. Um. And you get a, a second level thing called academic. When you take the study action, you have advantage on any intelligence check you make as part of that action. Ta-da! That's awesome. I think that's a cool, <laughs> that's a cool thematic thing. You're like a, you're like a, you're like a studious old researcher. Why yeah. do you have to be old? Re- yeah. You're a studious young researcher. Why do you gotta be supple. young? You're so <laughs> supple and young. Um. So yeah, that's like the only new thing that you really get. Uh, from the class, there's also the subclass they chose to do evoker, evoker, um, which is formerly school of evocation, no more uh, school of on anything, yeah. Which I don't, who cares? Just leave it, leave it, let people use the things they already know. Don't <laughs> you just don't, don't like change? change I, feel, I feel like you just don't like change, is the problem. Here. I don't like change for change sake, like if it's a if it's for a reason, sure. But if you're like, mm, we just like this better, <laughs> what why? But I, everyone already knows it as this. Stop it. <laughs> you want to know like, what? Well, there's you, a reason and it's this. Like, oh, okay. You want to know um, what uh you want to know what RPG bot said about that? What? Which is the coast is abandoning the school of X nomenclature in favor of the nickname for protection practitioners of that school. That's going to make search engine optimization a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. I kind of like uh, it. I think evoker sounds cooler than school of evocation. Yeah. <laughs> it does sound cooler. Okay. Um all right. Uh, you can get you get a couple extra evocation spells out of your yep. spell slots and potent cantrip now also works with cantrip attack rolls, not just saving throws. I don't they know take if half I like damage that. with cat cantrips. Yeah, if you miss with a cantrip on an attack roll, they take half damage, and I don't think that I like that. Why not? It's so good. <laughs> it is good, but it's like, uh, can we just, can you miss ever? Please just miss every now and then. It's fine. It <laughs> builds character. <laughs> no missing. No missing allowed. God. Everyone will have Nick and everyone will have this and yeah, nobody like, will ever miss. I, that's why I just, just miss. It's okay to miss sometimes. <laughs> uh, when your heroes like go up against stuff like, oh, you're going up against these monsters who are all evokers. <laughs> They never miss. <laughs> they never miss. That's the whole cult. Come join our cult. You could become an evoker. Never miss your targets. <laughs> Even if it flies completely to the side, 10 feet away, they're still going to take a little bit of damage. <laughs> the heat from the bolt as it passes by yep. burns the flesh. <laughs> they take half damage. Oh, man. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's that's it. I love um, it. Empower evocation. You can add your intelligence model. I think these are all normal evocation things. Uh, yeah, the yeah, other yeah. thing I wanted to talk about was, and we, we talked a little bit about it already, was death saving throws. Um, oh, yeah. Death saving throws. They changed so, them back, right? Yeah. On your third successful death, death save, you regain a oh. hit point, but you are unconscious and start your short rest. You remain unconscious until you regain more hit points or until another creature uses an action to administer first aid to you, which requires a successful DC 10 medicine check. They got rid uh, of so they role. changed it from you being at zero hit points and stabilized or whatever to unconscious at one hit point and taking a short rest. Yeah. So <laughs> He's now- so peaceful over there sitting right under that fireball. He's taking a short rest. It'll be fine. He's taking a short rest. <laughs> He's got one HP, but he won't stand up. There's a dragon stomping around on him, but he'll be all right. He's taking a short rest. He'll get up in a bit. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't get, like these are strange changes. I don't understand. They uh, changed so yeah, now. You can get up in an hour instead of one d four hours. Yeah, that's potentially a lot better, depending on the situation. Very, very niche 
situation yeah, where just, one hour is better than four. I guess it's just uh, it's a very it's a very specific thing that I don't feel like they happens enough to justify this many attempts at changes. <laughs> they reverted the exhaustion mechanic too. Did they revert it or did they just? I guess so. They sort of removed yeah. it. Yeah. Which we'll see. We'll see. Weren't we trying that in your campaign? Yep. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. It's not. It's, it's less I mean, brutal it can than, be. The, than the normal one. Mm. Minus one to your rolls instead of disadvantage. And then minus two to your rolls instead of disadvantage on all ability checks and half. But you speed. don't get exhaustion when you stand up in the original rules, right? Oh, this is that's separate. Oh, okay. Uh, that's that was just a different I'm thing. Thinking I was trying. Else. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Well, uh, I think we pretty much ha- slap dashedly got through everything. That was Man, amazing. That was a lot. <laughs> we started out lot. normal, and I was like, "This ain't going to work." Normal. I think actually, <laughs> you know what? If another one of these comes up, I think the way we break this down next time is: it seemed like we all had a class that we liked more than the others. Next time, we should all pick one class and deep dive know one class instead of each of us generally knowing everything. I don't think there's going to be another one like this, though. I think that Monk is the only class they have left. I think they'll get another version. Until, I think this until, is another yeah. version. Until they, until they make come out with the first round of edits, yeah. which is going to be a lot longer down the road. There'll be a lot to change. I think there's going to be a lot of changes in, in an edit of this. Yeah. Because I, I think some things are so good and some things are... Not good at they, all. They please. have to do something with Warlock. Yes, please do something, do something with Warlock. Make, Make it Warlock good. Make it fun. Because right Bound. now, it, it's just like it's just not a whole lot of fun to be like. She, and and like with Wiz- Eldritch Blast, Eldritch yeah. Blast, Eldritch Blast, Eldritch Blast, Eldritch Blast. They need to. I think. I think they need to. Make Warlock more powerful. Fix it. Make it defined. Make it its own thing. It's unique from everything else. It's fun. It's cool. That needs a rework completely, I think, from what they did. Not com- Maybe not completely, but quite a drastic change. Wizards. I love the new spell stuff. Being able to create spells. Rain it in just a little because it's a little <laughs> broken. Sorcerers. I like almost all the changes. Give me back goddamn twin spell. One and two. Uh, <clears throat> as much as I am a optimization fiend. That wish thing needs to go. <laughs> that shit's crazy. Yeah, dump that wish thing. And, and yeah, I think they just, they have not quite found what they're looking for, I hope, with Warlock. Like, Wizard is in a good place. Sorcerer is in a good and separate place. Warlock needs something. Warlock <laughs> needs something, because as it is right now, I would never choose to play a Warlock. Unless it was just to dip in and grab that. Yeah. For mechanically, I would never choose to play it. I, I like it thematically still, but I feel like they need to do something to make it. Here's the thing. I, I think I think this comes up a lot. This is like a thing that comes up a lot. Thematic versus like mechanical. And I do think that they are different things and you're totally valid for playing a character completely thematically. And you're totally valid for playing a, completely, a character completely for optimization reasons. But the sweet spot is where they're powerful enough to be fun and still thematically cool. Yes, I agree with that. Because if you have a super thematic character that sucks balls, you might want to <laughs> play it, but it's and you, and you might feel real cool the whole time. You're like, I, all the RP moments, you're like, I deal with my inner dark self. Oh. <laughs> but then the when the combat, combat comes, 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 yeah, and you're just getting <laughs> like one guy gets past your fighter and he wipes your ass out, no problem, because <laughs> you do no damage and you're garbage. And your fighter's up there just like, punching people to the moon and doing all this crazy <laughs> shit. You got your sorcerers in the back free cast and wish all willy nilly style. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just sitting in the front going, why am I even here? <laughs> There's a wizard well, yeah. next to you. Well, you're like, are like, you need to come. You need to and come. you need to come. <laughs> Tell you what, yeah, I hope I hope I'll, I'll trade this service for a wish. <laughs> I, I really hope they find something for Warlock because it, yeah. it has the I, it has the thematic ability to be very cool. Yeah, but it's not there. Here's your I'm here's your sure level. How to get there, but if one, they paid one, me, I would come up with something. One last character <laughs> idea. You're a level 18 sorcerer. No, this is an NPC idea. Okay. There's a level 18 or, or level 20 could be level 20. Level 18 sorcerer who's the king of a large city. 
And the only reason he is is because he bribed the entire council with wish spells. <laughs> so I can tell you what, guys. Why didn't he just wish to be the the king? <laughs> He's no, doing this improperly. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta gain their trust a little bit before you crush them. No, you just wish that they gain that you that they trust you. I guess you could. I suppose there's no drawback. You're right. You're totally right. I'm king of the world, dude. <laughs> I, wish I wish I were king of the world, and I'm done. And then, it, and then it doesn't work, and you go, can't wait till try that again tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> at, at no direction. At no penalty, baby. <laughs> no risk to myself. I can't wait to play a sorcerer, is what I'm saying. All right. Well, there you go. There's the UA. Uh, the UA. Not not our normal coverage, but a faster, funner, more exciting coverage. Funnerer. Funnerer. For a document this long, we'll probably go back to the normal style on smaller stuff. Yeah. Anyways, Whew. give us some feedback. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Yeah.